Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to continue the economy roadmap when it comes to War Thunder with a bunch of changes that have been implemented in today. A lot of them are ones which were supposed to come in summer 2023, and so we are continuing to follow the roadmap. There are some changes though, uh, with ones uh, from summer uh, 2023. Uh, they've actually also implemented some which was supposed to be in the next major update in early autumn, which is usually in September, uh, but also missed some, which are going to be from the summer updates. So we'll probably see some more changes going forward. The RP changes haven't come in yet. Uh, so the ones where they're going to group vehicles together and reduce them, and also the research reductions of rank six and seven aircraft. Instead, we get more Silver Lions changes, which are coming in. None of the matchmaking changes either, or the locations and missions changes have come in. Instead, it's all about the SL, and a few minor points about research points as it goes through. The first part of it is about improving premium accounts. They talked about doing this a while ago. The idea of insurance uh, on a premium account. So, if you are in a battle, and you lose more SL than you gain, then what ends up happening is you will not have to pay for that loss. So this will only work, by the way, if you have automatic vehicle repair and automatic ammo refill turned on. So if you have them turned off, um, you won't be able to uh, you you won't be able to get access to this feature, which sucks because. As many people know, turning off auto repair was one of the ways that you could significantly save SL over the years. And uh, now it might be the opposite. Uh, maybe we'll see a new era uh, where it actually makes more sense to keep it on because then if you're running premium, um, you won't, you know, lose uh, any SL. They leave an example for improving these premium accounts. So, if you have earned 10,000 SL during a battle, but also received 3,000 SL in penalties for killing allies, your final earnings amount to 7,000 SL. Assuming you've spent 12,000 SL for repairs and ammunition in this session, the compensation will be 2,000 SL instead of 5,000, and in total you'll lose 3,000 as a result exactly the same amount as the penalty for killing allies. With no friendly kills, you will always break even or earn more SL than you've spent. So basically, unless you, you know, <laughs> kill teammates, uh, you will always go positive on SL in a battle now. Now, it'll be interesting to see how this uh, goes with the economy, uh, especially at high tiers. Um, a lot of people, including myself, have questioned this addition because it's basically just going to leave to way more one death leaving, especially if you couple it with one of the repair uh, timing things that they're bringing in. So yeah, it's be interested to, interesting to see. It also says compensation of expenses is added to the list of rewards when the battle ends and is displayed on the battle statistics screen and in personal messages that contain battle results. So overall, um, it'll be interesting to see how this works because obviously what if you leave a battle early? Will it still count? Will it still go on to the next one because of course you'll have automatically repaired your vehicles. I suppose then it maybe makes more sense uh, for the average to work. So that would be kind of uh, cool to see. Now, the next thing that they've implemented, which is something a lot of people have asked for for a very long time, and it's a fair thing, it should have been in since the game's beginning, is a free repair when you get destroyed by an ally. So if you get team killed, basically, you won't have to pay for the repair. Uh, so um, that's, you know, really nice. <clears throat> and then it also says in modes where you are, where there are no repairs, but pair respawns, so such as RSB, if an ally destroys your vehicle, your next respawn in the session on the same vehicle will be free, which is nice. So overall, team getting team killed now doesn't punish the person who's getting team killed, which is something that has happened in all of War Thunder's history, it never made any sense. I think it's one of those things that's blown a little bit out of proportion compared to the amount of people it actually affects, but at the same time, it's something that should have been changed a very long time ago. So to see it get changed now is positive, even if it is very along the line. They're also bringing in a detailed rewards log after the battle, 
Uh, so a lot more information is going to be available to individuals uh, to see where everything basically went. You can see a bunch of different things. So uh, you can actually see when you destroyed vehicles, how much RP you made from destroying the vehicles, and also uh, how much, you know, SL you've got from that stuff too. So instead of just looking at, let's say you've destroyed X amount of vehicles, you can actually see what you destroyed, and then same with the CIS and same with everything else. So there's just way more information that is available they are uh, kind of combining, you know, the times that you have in battle with what rewards you got and all of that, which is really cool, actually. And it means you have just more statistics to have breakdowns of what you've done and where you've done it. One of the things I'd like to see uh, from this is that this is expanded upon into the service record. You know, uh, get some more uh, statistics in there since that's an area of the game that really hasn't been changed that much. So it would be lovely to see that going forward. And the detail log is only available in the main game modes, Ground Arcade, Realistic Simulator Battles, Air Arcade, Realistic and Sim, Naval Arcade, Realistic Battles, and Helicopter Battles. So it's not available in like the extra ones, I suppose, like the events stuff, and maybe Naval EC as well, uh, which will be around. Also at the same time, you'll have the ability to be able to copy uh, the detailed battle results to your clipboard. Uh, so then you can share them online or analyze them after they've uh, gone. So overall, you can kind of uh, be able to be like, hey, look how well I did, blah, 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 blah. You know, the, that's the thing that a decent amount of people do, uh, which is uh, kind of interesting. Um, everything will have a detailed log behind it, except for hits. But they do uh, say in the future, um, after testing an additional polish, um, they may actually add a few other things. Um, basically, it says, after testing, we may also add additional rewards in the session that aren't related to the immediate actions of a player, such as orders. All rewards that didn't get their own, li uh, own lines in the list are collected under other rewards. So that'll be cool. Um, more information is power, and this is a lot of information. <laughs> Then you have uh, free backups for purchases of premium vehicles. So they said, especially for higher echelon vehicles, this was an issue. A lot of people want death leaving and so on and so forth. The example they give is actually the Meteor F Mark 8 Reaper, which is a bit of an odd one. Um, but it's now, uh, if you purchased it for 8,380 GE, you would get it and 15 backups for free. So they're adding backups to these vehicles. And uh, that's obviously good, and it will be displayed before purchase so you know how much you're getting. This will help uh, when it comes to repairs, um, obviously, uh, in stuff like ground battles and also naval battles. And uh, also, the main thing it's supposed to combat is one death leaving. Let's see if it actually does it or not. At the same time, you'll get mission points for helping teammates now, uh, which is a nice little boost. So in ground battles, for each repair assist, the player will receive 40 mission points up to 10 times per session. So to counter possible foul play, fair players don't usually repair allies over 10 times in a single session. So basically, they don't want people sat next to each other, artillering each other, um, repairing each other over and over and over again. And also you get 150 points for each fire put out, and there's going to be no limits on that, obviously because you run out of FPE. And in naval battles, helping out with repairs doesn't require any sacrifices or even effort from the helper, and occurs automatically when remaining near an ally, so less points will be awarded than in ground, so you'll still get 10 per each repair up to 10 times in the session. Which is fair, you know, it, it really... A lot of automatic naval stuff, like sometimes you do go towards an ally to try and help them out, but most of the time it's done uh, without, you know, without even realizing when you all spawn together and somebody's taken damage. But the main thing from this is this is positive. People can make more score and people can go more forward with it. And then also the duplicate fire control mode is another one of those areas which is getting um, kind of redone. So when a gunner gets knocked out, there's now a delay before the tank commander gains control of the duplicate fire control system. So it's not instant like it was before. This obviously is a bit of a problem uh, because it means even if you do critical damage to something, it can just snap and annihilate you, which is what 
was kind of happening before, and it was very annoying um, at the end of the day. So luckily, uh, they've been able to uh, fix that and kind of go forward with that. Uh, so overall, not too bad, and uh, nice to see a lot of these changes. As I said, the main one uh, for me is the repair stuff, and hopefully at some point we do get those RP changes coming in. The big RP changes are the grouping of the vehicles and reducing the RP, and then also the reduction of research and purchase costs of rank 7 and 6 vehicles for aviation. There's also the matchmaking changes, but I'm sure they'll just come in with a BR adjustment. And also there's the revision of the naval uh, progression as well, uh, which they're looking at and skill bonuses in RP that they're going to bring in too. There's also a bunch of other things such as battle tasks and battle pass tasks available in ground sim. They've actually done that but not ticked it off yet in the autumn update. And also at the same time, uh, you have the fourth update of the year which will have the research bonuses for new nations for players with top tier vehicles of another nations. Which should be come in, uh, coming in at some point. So a lot of stuff that's uh, coming in. The main things that missed out from the summer updates so far is the dynamic repair cost reduction we talked about, and also the capture point reward for vehicles that failed to survive until capture completion. Overall, these changes are very positive. It's nice to see them, and hopefully you enjoy them too, so we can have a great time playing with this new economy. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Millie Draper, Juan the Panda, Nick R. Kupila, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie B. Young, Peter Grayling, Jerry Provolt, Bereen, Alan Hacker, Sem Arslan, Uncle Bean, Derek R., and Lafouche for supporting the channel.